Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, September 20th, 2010 City Council meeting. Could we have a roll call, please? Alderman Rivera. Present. Alderman Cunningham. Alderman Conkin. Present. Alderman Moisio. Alderman Figueroa. Present. Alderman Newsom. Present. Alderman Tempas. Present. Alderman Needham. Present. Alderman Larson. Present. Present and accounted for. We have a quorum. Could you please rise for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this evening we will have a, a brief executive session. Uh, if you refer to the agenda, there is um, item 10. We will have the executive session before item 10. It shouldn't last more than four or five minutes, I don't think. And then we will be back out to continue the rest of the uh, night's business. Um, this evening, uh, to start off the mayor's comments, um, we have uh, with us uh, Jane Waller, who has uh, volunteered to serve as uh, the chairperson for the Waukegan Cultural Arts Steering Committee. And we've requested uh, Jane to come and make a uh, brief presentation as to what this committee is all about and uh, how they intend to move uh, the arts forward for the city of Waukegan. Jane, if you could please come forward. Before I begin, we have a little bit of a warm-up that I think you're going to enjoy. And we're going to pass out to you a handout so you can follow my presentation. Um, I want to thank the mayor and the members of the city council for this opportunity to talk to you. And I hope you've all had an opportunity to take a look at our proposal. Okay. If you haven't, we have an extra copy that um, is being passed out now. Again, thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation to you. I'd like to start out by giving a little bit of background. 
In January of 2010, the mayor asked me to chair a <coughs> blue ribbon committee of citizens and other members of our community who are interested in the arts and in the future of Waukegan. He gave us a six-month window and asked us to come up with some strategies to uh, work with the existing resources that we have to better position Waukegan along and consistent with the downtown plan um, for the downtown lakefront master plan to make Waukegan a better place to live, work, and play. We delivered our final report to the mayor on May 25th, and I'm pleased now to share some of those details with you. The next screen, you will see the names that the, the, the steering committee was composed of. It was an impressive and di diverse list of community members and representatives from Arctic organiza organizations and local businesses. We spent a lot of time. We looked into what other organizations around the region and around the country were doing. And we discovered that even in the short period of time that we were meeting, the opportunity for collaboration could produce important and impressive and positive results. For example, at the very first meeting of our committee, the mayor mentioned that the Latino Film Festival was interested in coming to Waukegan and using the Genesee as a venue. With that information, a, a lot of discussion was generated and a subcommittee was formed out of that first meeting of our committee that was consisting of representatives from the city, from the Genesee, from the College of Lake County, and from the Latino Coalition. And we did, we brought the Latino Festival to Waukegan. The films were wonderful, and I want to tell you that when I saw them, they were a reminder to me of the, the transformative power of the arts, individually and for a community. The next slide will give you a little bit of what our approach was like. We met monthly. We invited local artists to come in and tell us what was going on in Waukegan already. And as I said, we looked at models around the area, around the region, around the country. We sought input from the Cultural Alliance of Southeastern Michigan and from the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. And that was through my connection with Bob Barnett. I don't know if you know Bob. He's a, a really important Washington lawyer, but at heart, he's a Waukegan boy. And he and I went to high school together back in the day when Alderman Tempest was the driver's ed teacher. Wow. <laughs> Class of 64. <laughs> Class of 64. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> no, but we were scooping the loop every Friday and Saturday night. So Bob put me in touch with Brett Egan, and Brett is um, someone who is working at the Kennedy Center helping arts organizations better manage, and he gave us some ideas of what our proposal should entail so that we could serve the community and meet the goal that the, the mayor had for us, which is to develop some strategies for building Waukegan as an economic um, powerhouse through the arts. I'm going to show the next screen, and I'm not going to go through all of those items on that screen individually. You do have your report in front of you, um, but it just shows you the various components. We, you know, I think we produced a really fine proposal and well thought out. Um, but let me just have us look at the business case as a, um, an important part of our proposal. The big point here is that a thriving art scene is a strong economic engine. Towns and countries around the country and around the world have benefited in economic terms from building on the strategy of promoting the arts. And survey after survey tells us that people come to a, a, a community because of the educational resources and because of the opportunities for cultural um, experiences. Historically, Waukegan has a very strong presence in the arts, um, in its schools, in its community, and its, in its cultural fabric. Remember what we saw in that video um, as we started the presentation. I think clearly Waukegan has already, um, uh, already understands the value of the arts and using it as a strategy for economic development. The Genesee Theater is a prime example of that, and also the, um, the, the development agreement that the city has with ArtSpace. 
However, it's our view that the Genesee or the art space cannot carry the whole burden on their shoulders. There has to be a grassroots support for the arts in our community. Now, on the next slide, you will see a partial list of the inventory of Waukegan's arts assets. Of course, there's the Genesee. Um, it's ranked in the nation's top 10. It is our linchpin for economic development. It attracts audiences from five states. We have new businesses in town. We have Joplin's Java and Family Piano, which is actively involved in music education. And we have the Rhythm Academy, which is located in the old Y. And I am told that business-wise, it is doing better every week. There's Clockwise Theater, a new professional theater in town, which staged its first produ production, Kita y Fernanda, this summer to rave reviews and sell out audiences. I hope you've heard the buzz about Clockwise. It is big. By the way, I've heard that Waukegan is known for um, being the home of, Brad, of Jack Benny and Ray Bradbury, but someday Waukegan is gonna be known as the home for Norma Serna, who was a young actress in that play and she was fantastic. Madeline Sergal, who is the, one of the artistic directors of Clockwise, looks at Waukegan and she sees potential. We have to continue to support people with en energy like that. Of course, no list would be complete without man mentioning the Park District and its great cultural arts and its programming, or the, our Waukegan Library, which hosts summer concerts, a storytelling concert uh, festival, and this year the, sto uh, the Starry, uh, Starry Nights um, fundraiser, which showcased liter literary works and also our wonderful North Genesee residential, North Sheridan Road residential um, district. We can't overlook the resources of our educational community. Both CLC and Robert Morris University participated in our committee. What I learned about Robert Morris University is that it knows that, is, that what is good for Waukegan is good for Robert Morris University. And they were a big part of the, the um, work that we did on this committee. And CLC is a great neighbor to have. Um, I point to the Latino Film Festival. Chris Cooling, who teaches film at CLC, worked on the committee. He introduced the films and he ran workshops for students at CLC about the various films that were screened. And of course, we have an important partner in our schools. Bringing art to youth at risk is a winning strategy for transforming arts transforming lives. I just ask you to think about the face of that young boy who was working on an art project in the parks, one of the, the slides that you saw earlier, and that big smile that he had on his face, and how it made him feel good, and it makes us feel good knowing that he's, he's actively involved in, the, in something that's worthwhile. We also have the energy that's generated by the Ray Bradbury Dandelion Wine Festival and the efforts at Art Etc. to bring music festivals to Waukegan. And finally, let me say that the Illinois Arts Alliance and the Muni Municipal League of Illinois have recognized Waukegan as an art-friendly community for the last two years in a row. So the next screen is gonna tell you what we have saw as our challenges. We and you'll see them on the list. I'm not gonna go over them because you know we have huge challenges. Um, but what do we need in order to be successful? Well, we need a dedicated organization, we need strong leadership, we need community-wide support, and we need programming and resources that support the community and respond to the needs of the community. And most importantly, we need a concerted effort to brand Waukegan as an arts destination. So on the next screen, you're gonna see our recommendation. We considered two models. One, a commission created by ordinance by the city of Waukegan, or two, an independent, not-for-profit, grassroots organization dependent on membership dues, in-kind services, <coughs> grants, and fundraising. The good news for you all is that we opted for proposal number two. In recognition of the city's budgetary constraints in this current economic time, 
we determined that the best strategy at this time is not a commission form, but an independent, not-for-profit organization. That's good news. We are not asking for funding from the city. We are, however, asking for your support, and we are requesting that the mayor provide leadership in recruiting members from the various partners around um, our city to become involved in this organization. Membership would be composed of entities and individuals from the public and private sector who would serve without compensation and share in the responsibility for providing technical, financial, and in-kind support. We're going to need a place to meet, just for example. So we are going to have to look to our members to help us find locations like that. From time to time, we might have to do some copying. We need some of that support. We'll also have to pay for filing as a not-for-profit the, the, with the Secretary of State, and we're going to have to pay for the cost of filing our application for a not-for-profit organization with the Internal Revenue um, Service. So, and our long-term goal, of course, is to find some stable source of funding through grants, fundraising, and the membership dues. So the next count, uh, uh, slide shows us who we are asking to serve on this board. And they're all the, the people that I've been talking about, the city, the park district, the library, the schools, Main Street, Genesee Theater, College of Lake County, Robert Morris University, Faith Community, various Waukegan arts and arts organizations, artists, the, the Waukegan Chamber of Commerce, in some way, what we are doing is going to be modeled on the kinds of things that a Chamber of Commerce does because we are modeling um, something that will brand Waukegan as a place to come to for the arts. Also businesses, um, Convention and Visitors Bureau, and of course, interested citizens. So what's next? We propose that um, the mayor take the leadership in inviting members to join the board we do have a transition team it's going to, um, who will be composed of people who have already stepped up. I'm, I'm going to recognize Lori Nierheim, who is sitting at the computer. She is the one who created the video to start with, which I think you know, just really is, was very impressive, and I'm so glad that we have her talent involved in this. Teddy Anderson, Claudia Freeman, Kathy Jensen, and Violet Ricker will also be involved in the transition team. We hope to publicize and then call out to artists so that we can start to do some of the things that we'll have to do early on to demonstrate the, um, uh, to prove the reason why we exist. And one of the things we're thinking that we need to do is develop an art calendar. And we already have someone who's working on that, Jerry Sullivan at Art Etc. has already begin, begun the, the process of thinking about how to do that, and we're going to use his um, talents and his resources. And we're going to call out to local artists and say, will you join us? One idea that I have for one of our first projects would be to call out to local artists, asking them to produce a piece of art, whether it be the visual, dramatic, literature, showcasing Waukegan as the centerpiece of the piece of art that they create. So an oil painting of the downtown area, or an oil painting of the, of the lakefront, or a poet, poetry slam where the, uh, the kids come up and they do a rap thing about Waukegan, or putting video cameras in the hands of citizens who will go around and do a day in the life. I mean, that's just one idea that we might have to sort of show that Waukegan cares about itself, and it's got a lot of talent that can be showcased. So um, that's our next step, and what do we think the city can do for us? Um, champion us, pr promote the arts and the value of the arts in the community, and help us stem the loss of Waukegan's art assets. And we're going to leave you with one more slide that shows you how the Waukegan Arts Council would be the center of a lot of energy and entities that are already working independently. This would bring them all together under one umbrella. Thank you, Jane. And thank you very much. I very much appreciate the work of you. Well, 
I want to let you know I very much appreciate the work of your committee, and I wholeheartedly agree that there is a need for an umbrella organization to serve as an advocate for the cultural arts in the city of Waukegan. In recognition of the current economic environment, your proposal to create a private, not-for-profit organization makes the most sense. As mayor of a city with a rich history in the arts, I will most certainly take the lead in inviting representatives from our partners in the arts and other key individuals to serve as founding members of a board of directors for a Waukegan Arts Council. I'm grateful that the transition team you have assembled will begin the task of incorporating a new not-for-profit organization to serve as the legal home of the Waukegan Arts Council. You can count on me for my full support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I do want to add, a lot of people probably are not aware, but my background is in fine arts. I graduated from college with a degree in photography and as a painting major. And I recognize the energy that arts can bring to a community to help revitalize it and bring people back together again from all parts of the community, everybody being engaged. And I'm looking forward to the challenge, looking forward to make this thing work and bringing in all kinds of new partners, all kinds of new resources into the city of Waukegan. This is gonna be a wonderful effort. And I'm hoping and I know that everybody up here will take part, is looking forward to being partners in this, will recognize the joy possible in bringing the arts into Waukegan and making this a highly successful effort, so thank you. Um, I'll go to my regular mayor's comments. Um, those of you who have read tonight's agenda, uh, as you can see, we'll, we'll be reading three resolutions. The first resolution regarding Gojo's Restaurant has made me consider a manner in which our aldermen can acknowledge the accomplishments of local businesses and business people in a way that is fundamentally different from the spirit of the other two proclamations that we have this evening. One acknowledges the passing of a longtime friend, Curtis Christian, who was also a police officer, and the other, which acknowledges Domestic Violence Awareness Month, both of which are far more serious and have a different impact on the community. In the future, when one of our aldermen would like to acknowledge a Waukegan business, we would like to issue a Waukegan Business Community Accomplishment Proclamation that the aldermen can read during their public comments and then personally take to the business for delivery. They will have the same quality appearance as the other proclamations with the embossed seal and signatures, but will have a different title at the top. I believe that this will better protect the integrity of those awards given to community heroes and to such awareness events as we are acknowledging tonight that might have a more serious nature to them, yet allow local businesses to be recognized for their important contributions to our community. Two, we need to acknowledge something that quite amazing that has happened here within city government over the last oh, week and a half. And it's a small thing that doesn't make the papers, but I'd like to share this with everybody up here. Um, we have to acknowledge the amazing results that have been obtained by our finance and traffic departments working together to collect on the huge backload of uncollected fines from tickets and red light camera enforcement. They have done two things in the recent months. Number one, hired a new collection agency to hunt down old parking tickets and, number two, added software to check the SOS for updated mailing addresses so we can find parking ticket owners that have moved. This doubled the money collected per day by the traffic staff. The following amounts were brought in as follows. On September 9th, 2010, $4,570. On September 10th, $8,105. September 13th, $7,340. September 14th, $8,600. September 15th, $5,470. September 16th, $5,430. This has been teamwork from parking enforcement and traffic and finance. We still have more notices that will be going out. Our daily income had only been about $2,000 a day with the way the economy has been, it was troubling. Since we sent out 4,000 notices two weeks ago, we have had a huge responses to the notices. The total for last Friday, excuse me, 
my alarm is going off. It thinks it's 7.30 in the morning. Uh, the total for last Friday was $6,280, and so far today we have taken in $7,655. This is a great improvement on past methods, and we really do owe everyone involved our thanks for a job well done. Thank you very much, everybody involved. As many of you have heard, the Illinois Housing Development Authority has approved the art space project to be located in the old Karcher Hotel here in downtown Waukegan. This is a huge first step in the revitalization of our downtown driven by an arts-based approach to success. Many of our aldermen were fortunate enough to have toured an art space installation up in Minneapolis a couple of years back, and from what I was told, came back highly impressed by the impact that the project had on the surrounding neighborhoods. I've been advised that once this organization begins a project, they have never failed to succeed in refurbishing and bringing occupants from the creative arts to live, work, and play into areas of cities that had been struggling to re-energize re themselves. As a community, it is something we should all be excited about and look forward to the progress as the project kicks into gear over the next several months. As you heard earlier, we have engaged a group of highly energized residents to help oversee the artistic renaissance that will help lead this community forward in the years to come. I would also like to, I, would, I also think it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the hard work of Robin Shaves, who is no longer with our organization and other members of our planning and development staff in making all of this possible. On Sunday, I attended the ribbon cutting for Ansrud Cutter, a new high-tech corporation that has landed in our industrial park out near Fountain Square. It was a wonderful event with over 150 employees in attendance, as well as the company's corporate leadership and most importantly, their partners from Germany. It is a shame that we didn't have a better turnout among some of the officials, but I understand Raphael was there. He got a chance to look at the building. And the thing is that we need to attend these kinds of events and roll out the red carpet every time a business as significant as this one decides to adopt Waukegan as a new location for growth and opportunity. They are in the process of moving their equipment in, and over the next several months, we'll get the operation up and running. I have visited the plant in Libertyville, which is where we got them from, and the technology and general business operations are quite impressive. Hopefully, more of us will be able to visit the plant when we organize a tour once they are up and running in several months' time. And I also have to thank Russ Tomlin and Noel Kisher and others for the hard work that they put forth in bringing this new important company into the city of Waukegan. Today, we held a ribbon cutting for a new restaurant on Genesee Street. <coughs> it is a nice little place next, uh, called Jerry's Tacos and is located next door to Soto's Furniture at 120 North Genesee. It is a wonderful place with a very enthusiastic staff, and I hope that all of us here tonight take the time to give it a try. It is the first of several new restaurants that we will be announcing and we will be seeing opening in our downtown area over the next six months. The Fiestas Patrias Parade was a huge success, very well organized and with an amazing turnout. Estimates have the crowd that lined Washington Avenue from Buttrick then down to County at over 8,000 in number. Thanks go out to our police officers who helped in a command and control capacity and everyone who participated in making this significant event such a great success, especially our friends at FIST who worked so hard at cleaning up along the parade route once it was all finished. Now the Waukegan Air Show was also a huge success. Thanks to the organizers and their dedicated staff for making this event the spectacular, spectacular success that it was. I got a chance to see some of the aircraft and a very crazy 300 mile per hour school bus that I hope I never come across on the streets of Waukegan. <laughs> All I can say is if you haven't been to one, you have to get to this event and get it on your calendar for next year. Now I'd like to announce a special program that David Motley and our Waukegan Police Department have been able to put together. Uh, it came out of a program that the U.S. Conference of Mayors had begun. And this is in disposing of unused prescriptions that you might have around your homes. 
There were some delays in putting this program into place because the DEA had some concerns about the chain of handling on medications. But those concerns have been taken care of and we are moving forward with the program. So on Saturday, September 25th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Waukegan Police Station, which we know is right outside of these chambers, the police officers and others will be accepting prescriptions and then moving forward to rid them. I'm not sure exactly what the process is, whether they're burned, dissolved, I'm not sure how it's handled. But the idea is to keep them out of the landfills and to keep them out of our toilets. Because if you haven't heard, Prescription drugs are getting into the everyday drinking water supplies that we are taking in every day. Properties or materials like estrogen and other things are making their way into the water table and they are becoming a, something of great concern to health officials and to the uh, environmental officials as well. So I hope that uh, those of us here tonight will let their neighbors know and it will be on our website and that you will take part in this. Thank you. And that concludes my comments for this evening. We will now move on to audience time. First up for audience time would be Ms. Joyce Evans of 829 McAllister. Good evening, uh, Joyce Evans, 829 McAllister, Waukegan. Uh, this is not the first time I come here with this concern. Um, if you park on the city streets and you don't have a city sticker, you will get a ticket. If you just move here or you just come here and you park out there or you come here to visit, how do you know that you're going to get this ticket? The average person don't know about this until they get the ticket. The last time I asked this question, they said, well, whoever they're visiting should tell them about that. But the person that the people that live here don't know about this. So my thing is, how do you uh, where, uh, make the people aware they live in the city? There's a lot of people that don't know about this until they get a ticket. My neighbor two doors over, just got a ticket. And um, she has a company car. And she's going to have this company car for, you know, off and on. Then what happens, they turn this one back in, then she'll get another one. So what do, what do they do things like this without getting tickets? I don't have an answer for you, Joyce, right now. But I will say that uh, I spoke with my city prosecutor actually about this. Un it was unrelated to your comments, but about the same issue. And uh, one of the things that we had spoken about was uh, putting up more signage around Waukegan, particularly at every entry street into the community as much as we possibly can to increase awareness. As far as a solution to this one particular problem, I think it's something that we're going to have to sit down and talk to the chief about and see what we can work out. Okay. I'd just like to make a suggestion, just like she's got company cars and a lot of people that do work, you know, have company cars. Maybe you should make a, some kind of city thing that they could put in their window you know, come down and get it and put it in their window. Even if they get their first ticket, then they can bring it down and say, okay, I got a company car. Uh, and then from there, you can give them a sticker they put in their window. Well, I but think this, this, it needs it needs to it needs to stop because people don't need to work just to pay tickets. Well, and I agree, and it's something we will have to take a look at. Um, you know, they used to do the thing if you lived around West Campus, you had to have a little piece of paper you put in your, on your dashboard. Um, we would have to do something like that in such a way that we'd make sure that it would not be copied and then abused. So I'll talk to the chief, and uh, we'll see what we can do. We'll get back in touch with you. Okay. Um, far as like, okay, far as now, she has a company car. What does she need to do? Joyce, I don't have an answer right off the top of my head sitting right here. It's something that maybe you might talk to the chief about okay. before you leave this evening okay, and see fine. if he has any suggestions. Okay. Uh, Your okay. Honor, if you don't yes, mind. Alderman. Uh, so it gets on to the um, recording for tonight. The thing to do if you're from out of town, you're visiting relatives, you call the police department, give them the address, the license plate number of the car that, um, that, the, that your friends or your relatives the visitors are driving, report it to the police department, and they will not give you a ticket. If they do give you a ticket, at least it's recorded, and that ticket will be voided. But the important thing is to call the police department if you have visitors from out of town. And that's what I've told people. Joyce, could you come up, please, if you're going to speak again, just so we can record it? Okay. Jeez. What I'm saying, Alderman, a lot of people that just say, like, I live here, I know to do that, okay? But some people that live here, they don't know to 
call in ahead of time and say I'm got a. No, I know, but oh. that's why we want to give it on to the, put it on to the announcement so that people out in the audience at home <coughs> watching this can can also get that information. Okay, thank you. Okay, leave it to the chairman of judiciary to have the answer. Thanks, well, Tony. A lot of we've had a lot of situations in my ward where people have well, gotten tickets. Friends, uh, Alderman Newsom. Uh, another way that you can do that is is if you are a resident in the city of Waukegan, you have a driveway. You allow that visitor to use your driveway, and if you have a city sticker, you park your vehicle on the street, and you won't be issued a ticket, and they won't either. Although you do remember the- uh, uh, Alternate parking. Alternate parking. Yes. Definitely. So, okay, thank you, Alderman. Uh, any other comments or suggestions on that? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Mr. Uh, Jim Donovan, uh, 263 Keith. James Donovan, 263 Keith Avenue, Waukegan, and I'm here serving as the president of Waukegan Main Street. I wanted to follow up on the mayor's announcement about the uh, IDA uh, tax credit grant for uh, the art space project. I agree with what he said that this is the start, especially along with the Waukegan Arts Council, of a renaissance uh, in Waukegan. I personally view it as probably the biggest thing, the best thing to happen to Waukegan, at least in the 60 odd years since Jack Benny opened Man About Town in the world premiere at the Genesee Theater, uh, particularly in, in the arts. I have. Um, I have two pledges to make in response to this. You see, Main Street has been involved in this process from day zero. Even before it became a formal project and there were formal discussions, Teddy Anderson in particular, uh, whom I consider, if not the mother along with Robin Shabes, at least the midwife of this project, uh, which, is, which is about to be born, has uh, got it started. The city has been partners along with Main Street Art Space, of course, is a partner. Now the state has joined us as partners in their pledge of over $9 million in, um, uh, in grant, which is uh, going to be coming to the project and coming to our city. And with all of that, I want to be part of the partnership as well. So Main Street pledges to continue to do whatever it takes to make this happen. and. There will be fundraising going on as we approach uh, individuals, we approach corporations and foundations. I want to be one of the partners. And so I'm here personally pledging $1,000 toward the project because I want to see this happen. And if anyone wonders, Jim, how can you give something like that away? How can you make that type of an expense? My response is simple. It's a contribution. It is not an expense. It is an investment. I view this as being an investment in the future of Waukegan for the best thing that's happened in the 25 years that I've been here. And I think the improved quality of life in this city and the improved economic development that the Art Space Project will be bring to this city makes my small contribution cheap because the return to me personally will be huge. In fact, I would encourage anyone today listening to me uh, who's hearing this to consider, can you join in and become a partner as well? Thank you. Thank you, Jim, and uh, I'll call that thousand. <laughs> okay. All right. Next up, uh, we have Ms. Violet Ricker, 10 North Sheridan Road, living in the uh, once famous old Chateau building. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Violet, and I am the Executive Director of Waukegan Main Street. And I will be quick, because I have to go home and write a thank you note to Jim Donovan for his contribution now. Um, I just want to give you a quick monthly update on what Waukegan Main Street has been up to. First and foremost, today, as the Mayor mentioned, was um, the grand opening of Jerry's Tacos at 120 North Genesee Street. They have amazing food and great menus, so please stop in and pick up a menu today. It's a great place to have lunch. Um, and speaking of places to have lunch, that's one thing that Main Street has been working on a lot is encouraging all of our local residents and county employees who are here regularly to eat lunch downtown. 
Um, we've developed a new downtown dining guide that I've been distributing to various departments and I recently met with all of the court officers and deputies and had the privilege of surveying them and talking to them about lunch downtown and we're looking forward to inviting them to um, all of our restaurants in the neighborhood. Um, we've recently also approved three new sign lighting and awning program projects um, so that we can continue restoring facades downtown. So thank you very much to everyone who's worked on that project. And as the summer concludes, we were looking back over our calendar and we had 12 really successful Troubadours concerts. Those were the free Friday night concerts that we held um, from 5 to 8 p.m. and we look forward to doing those again next year. So if anybody's interested in playing next year, please give us a call at the office. Um, we've also continued our support and advocacy for the Karcher Arts Space and we just look forward to continuing to work with the city on that. Um, a fundraising event that we held over the weekend, I do just want to extend a thank you to all of our wonderful partners, including FIST, who helped um, with the setup and the cleanup of that event down at the Port District, and of course the Waukegan Port District, who allowed us to use their space, and the City of Waukegan and the Waukegan Park District, who partnered with us for that very successful fundraiser. We had a great time and we even raised some money so we can keep doing all this stuff. Um, and if you'll look at the back of the notes there, if anybody else would like a copy of our outcomes report, I'd be happy to distribute to you. We have a couple of events coming up. This Wednesday evening, we have an after after hours networker at the Wright Boutique that's just north of Greentown on Genesee Street. And on Saturday we have the dedication of the Madeline Fuqua Memorial Garden which was the uh, community garden on Genesee Street and a mm -hmm. Michael Kelsey concert at 3 p.m. Um, on October 6th we have our annual meeting of the members coming up where we'll be voting on our new board. That'll be 11.30 a.m. at the Waukegan Yacht Club so there's still time for you to become a member if you're interested in um, voting on our new board and helping us set our priorities for the next year. And on October 13th, we have a quarterly downtown merchant's breakfast at Greentown Tavern at 7.30 a.m. And October 27th, we have another after hours networker at the Lake County Bar Association. And you can look for all that information on our website at waukeganmainstreet.org. Thanks very much. Thanks, Violet. I, uh, I keep wanting to encourage you to breathe while you're doing all of that. <laughs> because I'm not sure how you get all that in. But uh, good job, thank you. Uh, next up is um, Mr. Chris Blanks, uh, 409 Oak Street. Mr. Hmm. Blanks, 409 Oak Street, Waukegan, Illinois. Um, I just want to say real quick, as founder and our founder and our president of our Black Abolition Movement for the Mind, which is also an artistic organization. We're right now, we're opening our headquarters. We uh, just moved in uh, to our new headquarters, which is BAM Poetry Information and Resource Headquarters. And uh, that will be located at 801 McAllister Avenue. So I am definitely interested in whatever we might be able to contribute, as well as whatever we can do to make sure our youth is a part of the artistical development that is going on here in this area. So I just wanted to make mention of that. And so I will be following up later on to find out where the various meetings are, so I can definitely be informing and uh, also inform our organizational members. Uh, with that being said, also, I wanted to make mention our last um, city council meeting when I was here. Uh, I know uh, someone had alluded, um, I think, Mayor, you had mentioned about the walking on the street ordinance. And um, I, I want to say that uh, last year I had came to uh, the city council meeting with a couple of people, and I just want to make sure that, you know, we proceed with that ordinance with caution because last year we brought some members, we brought some citizens before the city council that as to where under the old administration that particular uh, improper walking across the street ordinance in some cases had been utilized as to where some of our young people and young citizens was being harassed and intimidated under that. So I do understand that uh, no one should have to walk in the middle of the street or to block traffic and with respect to the oncoming traffic, but we also want to make sure that this particular ordinance is not utilized to harass or intimidate any of the young citizens. Okay, so I just wanted to make mention of that. Also, I wanted to make mention, um, if you can recall a while back, I came before the city council with dealing with the smoke and gun situation and that particular ordinance. I don't want that to go to, to grow too cold and I want to definitely get some feedback on what is the intentions on putting together a ordinance that is definitely geared towards holding accountable to make sure those incidents don't happen again where no citizen have to purchase a stolen gun. 
okay? Uh, also, I do, I would like some follow-up, and I'm not looking for anyone to get into the litigation aspect of this, but I would like to find out where are we at, because I do recall, may I think, a couple of the platform agendas that you had mentioned was definitely helping to deal with the excessive force, and I have to agree there have definitely been a curve in that. Uh, for the better. And uh, one of the other agendas is I definitely want to find out, I know you said that there will be some changes made in the $500 impoundment. And as I said, I'm not looking for anyone to get into the litigation of it, but uh, I had the displeasure. I had a couple of citizens who have came to me in regards to the $500 impoundment and would like to know, and I would like to know uh, what changes have been made and if there are any are. So those are three of the things that's on the table that we're interested in and concerned about. And as I said, in closing, as an artistical organization, we're definitely interested in whatever it is that we can contribute to the development of this uh, art development, as well as having our youth and our organization a part of that. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. You know, uh, one thing I want to say, too, you know, there's been a lot of talk about jobs in the city of Waukegan. One of the, the real exciting parts of this art space is that it really focuses on local labor, getting the work done. And that's important for the city. Yes. That's important. And it will help smaller companies. And of course, out, you have to be qualified. You have to be able to go through the bidding process. But it really does focus on local, local work opportunities. So as we move through this, you'll, you'll see that we will be putting out for bid, working of course with the state who controls the project by and large to make sure that local people, uh, qualified bidders get a good shot at getting work out of this project. So that's one of the things that we were very excited about. So we'll move forward on that. And again, like I said, we'll keep everybody apprised of that as we do it. Okay, thank you very much uh, to those of us that addressed us this evening. We appreciate your comments and your sentiments. Now before us, we have the uh, minutes of September 7th, 2010, regular meeting and executive session. I'll take a motion by so Alderman Newsom, seconded by Alderman Figueroa, to accept those minutes. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Figueroa? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman Needham? Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Ayes have it. The minutes are accepted as presented. Next up is resolutions and proclamations. First before us is a resolution that was brought forth by Alderman Tempest uh, for Go Joe's Restaurant. Alderman Tempest. Thank you, Your Honor. And if you'd like to step down, I'll, I'll have the Gutanas family and Judge Borish, you're part of that family. If you'd come up here and face the camera, we'd appreciate it. <coughs> Uh, come on, all the Gutanas family, aren't you? Come on, you got the kids too. They're the future, I hope. <laughs> and the judge ain't coming. Judge, judge, okay. Okay. Whereas, Nick, Chris, and Jimmy Gutanas begin their family-owned restaurant, Gojo's, in the city of Waukegan 43 years ago. Whereas the Gutanas family has shown their commitment and dedication to our community by completing a major renovation project to their restaurant, with no aid from the city, by the way. Whereas the Gutanas family, service to our community was given with such devotion that they have earned the respect and admiration of the citizens of our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Mayor Sabanjan and the members of the Waukegan City Council to hereby express their sincere appreciation and thanks to the Gutanas family for their distinguished service to our community. Be it further resolved that a suitable and gross copy of this resolution signed by the mayor and city clerk be presented to the members of the Gutanas family dated this 20th day of September 2010. And I'd like to add, I hope, that the younger ones continue the family service for another 40 some years.
Congratulations. Honorable Mayor, Honorable City Fathers, Honorable City Clerk, Honorable Judge Jane Waller, Judge Boris, Chief Greyhouse, and distinguished friends, good evening. My name is Nick Guntanas. My parents and I, along with my two brothers, Chris and Jim, were the founders of Gorgeous Family Restaurant in the city of Waukegan. Uh, prior to that, Gorgeous, we operated the Lakeview Restaurant downtown Waukegan. It's been a great pleasure and an honor to work with all of you the past 43 years. I'm honored and humbled to be here to receive this resolution. Unfortunately, our father and mother are no longer with us. Also, our, Jimmy, our brother Jimmy could not be here today. I know they would be very proud. On behalf of our families, I would like to thank you, all of you, including our employees, for the support we received throughout the years. Hopefully, in the years to come. Without the support of our community, this could not have been possible. I'm looking forward that my son Costa will carry on the tradition along with my brothers, sons, and nephews. Thank you. Also, I'd like to thank these lovely ladies over here. They've been my friends and customers for the past 40 years. <laughs> thank you very much. Hey, you guys. Good job. Quite a crew, huh? Very good, thank you very much. Uh, next up, uh, we have a resolution for an old friend of mine and of many of the people that are here tonight and out in the audience that knew Curtis um, over the years as a police officer and a uh, wonderful friend to the community of Waukegan. And uh, our uh, clerk, um, Wayne Motley, has asked, uh, given his uh, uh, partnership with uh, Curtis as a police officer that he be allowed to read uh, tonight's proclamation. Uh, before I read the proclamation, I'd like to say that one of the finest men I ever met in my life slipped into eternity on the 10th of September. And he was uh, one of the kindest men I ever met in my life, one of the most compassionate men I ever met in my life, and without question, the most considerate man I ever met in my life. It was my distinct honor to be mentored by him, and it was at his funeral I, I suddenly realized when all the people came up and spoke before his family, how many chiefs of police he mentored. The current chief, the former chief Yancey, Scott Burleson, Stevenson, uh, Judge Bridges was mentored by Christian. Uh, I can say to this, uh, Ann, Kimberly, and Kyle, thank you for allowing us the privilege of sharing your husband with us. This is resolution 10R63. <laughs> Whereas Curtis Christian served with honor and distinction as a member of the United States Army in Korea. And whereas Curtis Christian was an accomplished saxophonist and avid fisherman. And whereas Curtis Christian was a devoted husband to his wife Anne for 55 years, a loving father to his daughter Kimberly and his son Kyle, and a cherished grandfather to Tanya Hall and Jordan Christian. And whereas Curtis Christian was appointed to the Waukegan Police Department on April 5th 1958, promoted to sergeant October 22nd, 1970, to lieutenant August 3rd, 1973, and captain on January 9th, 1978. Whereas Captain Curtis Christian led by example and set the standard of excellence for his peers to strive to achieve. And whereas Captain Curtis Christian's service to the Waukegan Police Department was given with such devotion they earned respect, admiration, and friendship of his colleagues. Now therefore it be resolved that Mayor Sabanjan and members of the Waukegan Illinois City Council in recognition of Captain Curtis Christian's many contributions to the city of Waukegan and its citizens hereby express our deep appreciation for his dedication and commitment to our community and extend to his family our sincere sympathy on his passing. 
be it further resolved that a sealed embossed copy of this resolution signed by the mayor and city clerk be presented to his family dated this 20th day of September 2009. Captain, rest in peace. Thank you, Wayne. Do we have anybody that would like to add any comments? Uh, we need the motion to accept. We'll take a motion by Alderman Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Newsom. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Any comments to be added? I will say just real quickly, I got to know him as a young person. I got to know him during those days in the city of Waukegan when our police went on strike. And Curtis stood by our family. He stood by this city. He watched over our home, in our home, sometimes outside of the home parked in a, in a car. This was a good man. Yeah. He really was. And uh, it, you, know, you don't forget people like that. You really don't, that are willing to put themselves between you and harm's way in a volunteer fashion like that. So Wayne, he was your good friend, your yes. mentor of the many, but he was my protector when I was a child. And I'll never forget that. Thank you. Next up, we have a proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness this Month. This just has to go. Just, uh, just we'll take a motion by it. Alderman Newsom, seconded by Alderman Larson, to accept this proclamation. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, I think I have a suitable group that I can deliver that yes. to, so I will take care of that in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Uh, now we move into committee reports and motions. Uh, Public Works Committee, Alderman Rivera, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Public Works Committee came to uh, order on September 13th at uh, approximately uh, 5.05 in the evening. Uh, we had the approval of minutes. Uh, uh, we had uh, uh, two items on that. Item A, motion to approve the Public Works Committee minutes of August 9th of 2010. You need a motion on that, sir. Motion by Alderman Rivera, seconded by Alderman Conkin. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Figueroa? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman Needham? Aye. Alderman Larson? Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Item uh, B, motion to approve the Special Public Works Committee minutes of August 16th, 2010. I so we, move. We have a motion by Alderman Rivera, seconded by Alderman Larson. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Figueroa? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman Needham? Aye. Alderman Larson? Aye. Item three, old business. There uh, wasn't any uh, old business. I don't Item four, new business. Those, those things were never, the only thing on the agenda that was passed was Excuse me, on the one, we're trying to clarify something on the agenda. Please hold just one moment. The only one that was the only one that was, was came, that came out was the one that's on the agenda. Do we have items of business on this committee? That's yeah, this the one that's on the agenda. Business. The one that's on the agenda. Item A, that's it. Then. That's all. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, Which one? Red. That's A. Plan. Yeah, that, that's it. All right. Well, that's all it is. That's the only one on the agenda. Okay, Ask fine. Sorry. Well, well, uh, Sorry about that, no Alderman. Problem. No okay, problem. we just wanted yeah. to clarify the agenda. Okay, we have one item on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. We weren't that's showing the minute approvals right. that you no. brought for right. it. No, that, okay. that's not necessary. That's okay. fine. Bring it on. And, and let, let the record show that uh, the votes previously taken on public works matters were legal nullities and have been uh, withdrawn. Very well. Voted okay. in committee. All right, item A, which is the uh, public works uh, agenda. Uh, Item A, grant permission to accept the easement for uh, public utilities on uh, Delaney uh, Road. And uh, that's about uh, a, the gentleman there uh, that lives at that on uh, 2643, the owner, the property owner is granting, uh, you know, utility easement. Uh, so uh, that easement is part of their uh, connection to the city's uh, water main. I so move. We have a motion by Alderman Rivera, seconded by Alderman Conkin. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Needham. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Next up uh, would be uh, Finance Committee. These items are 
for discussion only this evening uh, due to um, uh, some agenda items that uh, were accidentally not included for Friday's posting. Um, but uh, I will hand this over to uh, Alderman Needham to uh, lead the discussion on the items. Thank you, Your Honor. We had the, uh, actually the uh, items from the previous meeting posted, so we cannot take action on these items. These items are listed. We can, we can discuss them and vote on them the next meeting. Uh, item A, B and C are all uh, relevant to a new vehicle for the fire department. Uh, item A, to authorize use of bond proceeds to fund the award of a contract to Curry Motor Fleet for the purpose of fire equipment and vehicles, specifically a 2011 Chevy Tahoe, amount not to exceed $32,287, budget code 307-1307-2639. Item B, uh, authorize use of bond proceeds to fund the award of a contract to Harvey Communications for the purpose of fire equipment and vehicles, specifically outfitting a new vehicle with safety and communication equipment, an amount not to exceed $14,866.90. Budget code 307-1307-26394. And finally, to authorize use of bond proceeds to fund the award of contract to raise auto body for the purpose of fire equipment and vehicles, specifically painting a new vehicle with safety and communication equipment, an amount not to exceed $2,676.51, budget code 307-1307-26394. All these have to do with the new 2011 Tahoe, our current one, according to Chief Young, uh, the current vehicle has 111,000, 120? 141, excuse me, 141,000 miles on it. Uh, it's starting to rack up uh, a pretty good repair bill now. It is used uh, by the battalion chiefs uh, every day in, in succession by A, B, and C shifts. So the vehicle is pretty much in nonstop use. It is outfitted with safety and uh, um, other types of uh, rescue equipment to help our uh, men in the field. And uh, these were the three items that were voted on, um, five nothing in committee. And we, ha we have to take action next meeting. Thank you. <coughs> that is all. Next up would be the Labor Relations Committee, and uh, what we have before us is a uh, motion to amend the salary schedule attached to Ordinance 10-0-32 to extend the salary that was established for the Alderman for the period beginning uh, 5-01-2010 to extend to 4-30-2015. I'll accept a motion from Alderman Tempest, seconded by Alderman Rivera. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. I say aye, and uh, just so the public uh, understands that we're at the same salary. There's none of the aldermen took any raises. So I want to make sure everyone understands that. I vote aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. I vote aye, and I'd like to expand my vote. Again, as Alderman Rivera pointed out, this is a frozen salary for the next four years. I think all the aldermen know seriously how uh, we are all are working to try to make the economic conditions of right in the city of Waukegan. And I don't believe there's one of us up there that does it for the money. Uh, some of us want to give back to our community, which is good so much for us. So I vote on. Alderman Needham? No. Alderman Larson. Aye. Nice habit. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have the Insurance Committee. Item A, Property and Casualty Insurance Renewal. Do we have a report from that committee? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in lieu of uh, Alderman Cunningham being the, uh, the, the chair and he had to, uh, he's not present. Uh, as the co-chair, 
I'm making that report. There's only one item on the agenda. The insurance committee met this evening at 6.41 p.m. Uh, and uh, the item on the agenda, the sole item on the agenda, had to do with the renewal of our property and casualty insurance uh, contract for the following year. Present tonight is uh, Valerie Wright Lewis uh, of the Owens Group and Bill Owens of the Owens Group, who's the president of the Owens Group. Each of the members of the, um, each of the council members were given a copy of the summary. Uh, if you will indulge with me just for a moment, I'd like to make the motion, and if there's any questions on that, I think that uh, Valerie can make a quick presentation uh, on the, for the summary. The uh, motion is to approve the property and casualty insurance renewal for the period of November 1, 2010 through October 31st, 2011 for a, at a cost of $1,502,000 seven hundred and seventy six but uh, not to exceed one million five hundred two thousand seven hundred and seventy six uh, dollars reflecting an estimated savings of one hundred and forty one thousand one hundred and forty nine uh, dollars or eight point six percent compared to the prior year now one of the things that um, that's happened over the last couple of years in, in an effort to reduce insurance costs. Uh, there was a, um, uh, a, a planned meeting, and that was a meeting with all of the, uh, with the staff and the insurance companies at, um, at an offsite in which uh, there was a, some very in interesting conversation uh, that went on and ways of saving the city dollars in our insurance costs. So without further, uh, if the council members will indulge, I'll ask Valerie Wright Lewis to uh, come forward and go through briefly with the presentation if there's any questions on that uh, from any of the council members. Good evening. Go ahead. Valerie Wright Lewis from the Owens Group. I work with the city on the insurance program and over the last year we've worked diligently at um, various programs where we are working with the human resources, the finance, and the risk management departments uh, to find ways to reduce costs for the city. And you've done a, an outstanding job over the last year. I want to commend the city for the endeavors that you've taken and, and the bold step to do the program, take the approach that you have over the last year. It has worked very well. The insurance companies were very impressed with what the city is doing. And, and to that effect, this is the first time that the insurance program has had a reduction uh, since we've been involved with the program and we've worked very hard on it but even prior to our involvement the city has not been receiving any type of insurance premium reductions or associated costs and we want to really thank you all for the hard work and the bold steps that you've taken to to reach this uh, plateau we have a lot more work to do and we are planning to move forward I'd like to go through quickly what is on your uh, summary sheet here, which shows the premium for the package policy for the year at the top. The package includes all of your coverages that are your liability coverages, general liability, auto liability, your physical, auto physical damage, your property coverage, uh, law enforcement liability, pu public officials, employee benefits. Those are all included in that figure shown above. And you also have coverage for things such as umbrella coverage, which goes above the package policy that gives you additional limits in the event your uh, limits on your underlying policy are exhausted for claims purposes. You also have uh, this year um, the underground storage tanks throughout the city are covered. Last year was your first time placing those coverages and so that now you have the assurance of knowing that they are accurately uh, assessed. And you have for the first time this year above ground tank storage, which we did a caref careful inventory and discovered that there were some tanks that were not included from previous years. So this is the first year that 
to our knowledge that we have all the tanks included on the policy. You have an environmental policy that was put into place last year that's a three-year policy, and that policy still is in effect, and it is for uh, pollution type exposure of that just started last year. That was the first year for that policy as well. Your workers' compensation policy is with Safety National Casualty, and they were also very impressed with what the city is doing to reduce costs. And as a result, they've also, um, as a function of your payroll, they've also offered a reduction in their premium. Um, the program with Aon is still in effect, and we are really doing a great job with the city with that, and we're, we're charging forward with all the work that needs to be done to help you even realize more savings in the, the coming years. So with that to say, the bottom number, which is the number that was um, shown, and discuss what those what that number was is all the coverages that were not already on a three-year term or a two-year term, which had been approved the prior year. So. That is uh, basically your insurance program for this year, and we look forward to coming back to you in six months with a, another um, update with all the work that we are doing to continue to find ways to reduce costs for the city. Bill Owens would like to add something. Briefly, uh, Bill Owens, I just wanted to uh, commend the mayor uh, for the wonderful uh, presentation that he gave Travelers Insurance a couple of months ago. It's the first time in the city's history that the city has entertained uh, an insurance company, Travelers being the second largest insurance company. You have a very a high quality program. And the mayor, along with uh, uh, Tina and many of the department heads, all the department heads uh, were met over at the Yacht Club. Uh, travelers flew in from around the country, uh, had several people there it, 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 high up in the company. And the mayor, you did a wonderful job in, in convincing them that the city of, of Waukegan is a city of progress. And uh, there were a number of things that have been done, and, and, and he out, you outlined a number of things that will be done. So we're, uh, that's the, you can see the, the results right there. Even though there was some previous history of some claims that were paid, they actually reduced the price. And had that not occurred, we might have seen a price increase. So uh, we just wanted to congratulate you on that. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, do we have any questions from any of the uh, aldermen? It is nice to see the prices go down. That's, that's not the usual trend. No. And it is nice <laughs> to see it. And I have to commend all the work that's being done by our department heads in this. We have the safety committee that meets, I think it's on a monthly basis. Yes. And they get together and they go over all the statistics. They look at what has happened, what can we do to change these things. And uh, all the department heads are working very hard to make this city a, a much safer in, in professional environment in which to work. And it doesn't happen overnight. Changing a culture takes a while, but I will say that the employees are responding very quickly to this too. And it's very impressive. So I want to thank all of you involved in this. We really do appreciate your hard work. I see no questions this evening. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. your help too, and, and Aon, your, you know, all of your support has been mm -hmm. instrumental in getting us into this mode. So, I, I would like to mention that the um, the original motion uh, was 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 to read for an estimated cost, and we can't really do a motion for an estimated cost. So I did a cost not to exceed, and there are several portions of the insurance policies, several of the insurance policies that after an audit of that particular, those particular numbers, uh, very likely they will go down, but there's a possibility it might go up a, 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 a sum. But in the past, uh, what they have done, the, the trend is that they have gone down. So um, we couldn't do really for an estimated cost, so we had to do for a cost not to exceed. And if there's any cost increase, of course we will come with the, with the data afterwards uh, uh, presenting sure. that uh, that increase and it'll be capped by our vote that's capped. what that's yeah. what codifies that so uh, we have a motion by Alderman Figueroa seconded um, by uh, Alderman Conkin and roll call please Alderman Rivera aye Alderman Conkin uh, I would like to make a comment I think that I'd also like to commend all of the department heads and the insurance groups we're getting together and saving Waukegan with 
is amounting to a great deal of money. Alderman Figueroa? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman Needham? Aye. Alderman Larson? Aye. Eyes have it, so approved. Uh, next up would be uh, the Genesee Theater Committee and uh, Alderman Newsom. Thank you, Your Honor. The Genesee Theater Committee met earlier this evening, approximately 5.40 p.m. There was one item of old business, uh, the approval of the 2010-2011 budget for the Genesee Theater. Uh, if you remember, last council meeting, we approved the first quarter of the fiscal year and we asked uh, the general manager, uh, Gary Zabinski, to uh, go back and he came back with a revised proposal uh, for us, the revised proposed budget for 2010-2011. And um, came in with the same budget that was, a, was approved last year the same amount with an addition of $55,000, which last year they, the city paid the utilities, and this year the Genesee Theater will be responsible for those utilities. So they're basically keeping their budget the same as last year. And uh, I would make a motion to approve the 2010-2011 budget for the Genesee Theater as presented, and I so move. We have uh, the motion by Alderman Newsom, seconded by Alderman Tempest. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Needham. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Do we have any old business? That's it. Seeing none. Communications? Seeing none, I will take a motion from Alderman Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Needham, to go in executive session to discuss real estate negotiation and purchase, as well as settlement of a legal claim. Roll call, please. Oh, yes. Is that? Sir, absolutely. We'll add that to the motion. Okay. Uh, Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Needham. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Ayes have it. It should take us about 15 minutes, I believe, to go through this. Yeah. Well, depending on uh, Alderman Tempest's <laughs> discussion, would you like to take a quick break before we go on? Yeah, yeah take, a, take a couple of minutes and then we'll. Hopefully, you all recorded Dancing with the Stars. Not so brief. Ten minutes. Okay, motion to come back into regular session by Alderman Rivera, seconded by Alderman Conkin. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. We're back in regular session. Now we will pick up the uh, agenda on item 10, new business and recommended actions by Corporation Council. Item A, approved payroll dated September 8, 2010 in the amount of $1,309,331.66. Motion by Alderman Needham, seconded by Alderman Tempest. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Needham. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Approved, thank you. Item B, approved bills dated September 20th, 2010 in the amount of $781,812.74. Motion by Alderman Needham, seconded by Alderman Tempest. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera? Aye. Alderman Conkin? Aye. Alderman Figueroa? Aye. Alderman Newsom? Aye. Alderman Tempest? Aye. Alderman Needham? Aye. Alderman Larson? Aye. Eyes have it. Do we have any block parties before us this evening? Uh, yes. There we a motion two, two. to uh, approve block parties by Alderman Conkin, seconded by Alderman Larson. All in favor? Aye. Just a moment, Your Honor. Oh, yes, Alderman Figueroa. There was a block party that was approved for last, this past weekend on Jenkinson Court from Dorchester to Buttrick. Uh, due to rain, there was a 
a, a rain date of this coming Saturday. So I'd just like that to show uh, on the minutes. Sure. And I, I'll talk call to make sure that we reissue that to all of the departments. Okay, we'll be sure to do that. Okay, uh, 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 I'm gonna say once more, to, uh, once more voice vote. Um, again, Alderman Conkin, motion, seconded by Alderman Larson. Um, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, thank you. Item D, approve trick or treat on Sunday, October 31st, 2010, from two o'clock to four o'clock p.m. Take a motion by Alderman Tempest, seconded by Alderman Newsom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. It's actually on Halloween, too. Yeah, it is. I know. It's, like, it's a rarity. Um, and let's hope it's not raining and 80 degrees out. So it'll be a nice, uh, nice day for everybody. Item E, adopt a resolution authorizing the sale of property by the City of Waukegan pursuant to the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, including 2219 Alta Vista. Take a motion by Alderman Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Newsom. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Needham. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Item F. Uh, approval for raffle, I'm sorry, raffle, there we go. A uh, raffle sale application for Health Reach Incorporated. Take a motion by Alderman Larson, seconded by Alderman Conkin. Voice vote, please. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it, thank you. Item G, adopt a resolution authorizing the purchase of property by the City of Waukegan pursuant to the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, including 901 Montesano Avenue. Take a motion by Alderman and Figueroa, seconded by Alderman Needham. Roll call, please. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Conkin. Aye. Alderman Figueroa. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman Needham. Aye. Alderman Larson. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Item H, the Waukegan High School Homecoming Bonfire, September 22nd, 2010, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Waukegan Public Beach. Take a motion by Alderman Larson, seconded by Alderman Tempest. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Your Honor. Will uh, this yes, be Alderman Figueroa. A Waukegan Fire Department? Yes, we've uh, had discussions with the school district about our role in it. We are limiting the size and construction of the bonfire. We will have police officers there and we have requested that instead of allowing the students to drive down to the event that they will be brought in by school bus. So the, that we the can The only maintain. reason I say this, Your Honor, we, a couple years ago we had, uh, not, not Waukegan, but it was another one of the suburbs, had a tragedy. There was deaths involved with the bonfire. And right. Not no, that we're I don't want to squash any fun, but uh, I believe it was Mayor? five by five foot, correct, Chief? Yes. Yeah, so Mayor? we are limiting that. Alderman Rivera. I, I want to say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The uh, uh, public safety component, police and fire. They've been in uh, communication negotiation with our school district, and they think they have it pretty well uh, under control. The concern I had that I expressed uh, previously was that, you know. If there's a knucklehead or two down there, they may get close to the water. We just want to make sure that we don't have another incident. And right. as long as all the insurance, uh, you know, uh, requirements are met, et cetera, I guess I guess we're good to go. So. And one of the reasons that we asked them to bring the students in by bus too was because of the nature of Seahorse Drive, being able to get emergency vehicles back and forth, and also being able to not possibly be able to check each vehicle coming in. Follow-up comment: uh, There are there are going to be some there is going to be an allowance for some cars to be driven down. There will be. Yes, there is. That's the latest I heard today. Chief, could you address that? Oops! Open up Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In uh, speaking with the school district, uh, they had said that uh, was that was going to be a. a bit of a problem having that many buses with that many students uh, coming at that time. They felt that it would, they would not be able to uh, put the, together to have all the students to be bussed to the location with the cost prohibited. It's been, they said around $8,000 to pay for all that with the police. So in talking uh, with the school 
and um, Mr. Correa, we worked out a plan that we'd hire more officers to basically guard the gate and inspect the vehicles as they come in through the gate, uh, checking IDs. Every student or any person even going on to the beach has to have a, a state ID or a student I ID. What we're going to do is shut down the beach um, earlier that night, uh, clearing out the beach area completely, close the gate, and then have an officer at the gate, an officer in the parking lot area. So any students uh, that are not bused in will have to will come in the vehicle, they'll have to show an ID, uh, if you don't have an ID, the vehicle will be turned around or you won't be allowed on the beach. Uh, then they will come into the beach. They will have to park in the area of the beach and then immediately uh, exit their vehicle and walk into a designated area which will be blocked off uh, so that the, the kids or whomever that is at the event will stay in that area. When they're ready to leave that area, they will have to immediately then leave that area, get into their vehicle, and drive away. We have a uh, mechanism in place with officers to allow just a certain amount of vehicles and a certain amount of traffic to uh, keep the flow, just in case there's a problem with uh, a fire ambulance and things of that sort. Okay, and uh, Chief Young, you're satisfied with this? Okay, well, then that's what we'll go with. Chief, yes, how many, how many people is the school district expecting to be down there? Uh, on their application, they said 400. Uh, but we'll have to monitor the amount of, of vehicles and people coming in, obviously, with the parking. We were not going to allow just anybody and in, in, in overcrowding. There's, they're not going to be able to park on Seahorse Drive or in that area just in parking spaces. So um, it's, it's going to be uh, kind of tight to make sure that the kids are there. We want to get as many kids in, involved or not, but they wanted to open it up to pretty much anyone, and uh, that's something we, we can't allow. Is there any plan in case more than 400 show? I mean, 400 is, what, half the size of the senior class? Right. Um, Bottom line is, is the restrictions we have is the vehicles and, and the amount of foot tra traffic. We don't want a lot of foot traffic uh, in that particular area at night, obviously. Uh, so the idea is that at some point we'll have to just limit it and shut it down if it's too many. A again, the idea is to get as many students as we can. That was the idea with the buses, uh, but they, they had some serious problems with putting that together in, in the short notice. Okay, Next year, though? Yes. Okay. Because I think that was our best hope of keeping a, a good, tight control over the flow of people in and out of there and who was getting in. And it also put the onus of some of the security pre-work on the school district at the bus loading point. Yeah, I, I things that we talked about. Right, and I talked at length with uh, Alderman Moisio, and he, he had some concerns, and he, he voiced that, that there are some major problems with allowing the cost of getting all the buses and all the students uh, there at that time. Okay. Next year, we can really gear, gauge toward that and lock that in early enough so they can get the funding. Okay, thanks. All right, so any other questions on that? Not really. He answered it. Okay. Because I remember a couple of years ago, they, somebody went in there and started the bonfire. Early. Early. Mm -hmm. So. Ruin the whole thing. And it's better there than in a residential area. Okay, good. Well, we'll get to the uh, get to the vote then. Uh, the motion by Alderman Larson, seconded by Alderman Tempest. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Item I, uh, special event to be held in Music in the Garden, September 25th, 2010, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Madeline Fuqua Memorial Garden. Um, take a motion by Alderman Newsom, seconded by Alderman Figueroa. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Item J, Council approval of library plan and estimated costs for library improvements. Um, I'll take a motion first, and then if we would like to have Richard Lee step up, I uh, would we'll take a motion by Alderman Larson, Second. seconded by Alderman Figueroa. Uh, Mr. Lee, uh, I don't know if we have any direct questions for you. Just, okay, you know what, remain seated. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, 11, uh, we will, I need a motion to hold over uh, all items under 11, A through E, until the next city council meeting. They, um, due to some co uh, contingencies, they were not prepared. So I would like to take a motion by Alderman Newsom, seconded by Alderman Rivera, to hold over these items to the next city council Do meeting. And do we need a motion? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I just I, I got a question. Alderman Rivera is moving to hold them over then. Well, no, I, I, I like to have a more of a reason why we're okay. holding this over, if you can explain it real quick. I was quickly. told they were not available for the agenda tonight. They're, They're not ready. They're, They're not, not ready. They're just not prepared yet. Yeah, Amy didn't have the <coughs> Okay. Uh, there's your answer. Yeah. Please. Please, go ahead. Briefly. Briefly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't prepare them because I thought that they were 
to be coming out of the committee on this council and be voted on at the next council. Right. So my apologies. It was a confusion with the agenda. My apologies. Is it going to affect these? Uh, you know, there are obviously it's going to affect the you know their, when they want to start. Well. In reality, the city council has already voted to approve all these projects. Right. So when I come back with the actual conditional use permits, it'll just be a reflection of what you've already passed. So it's just approving okay. the actual written thing. So they've already okay. been approved to start going on with their business. It's just this is the uh, the end Same point, way. the last point. Okay. Uh, I thought that they hadn't come out of committee and gotten voted on yet. Well, so typically it comes to committee committee votes on it, comes to the next city council, then it gets voted on, and then at the next city council, I give you the conditional use permit or what have you, or the handicapped parking. It should only take me half an hour to prepare all five of them, but unfortunately, I misunderstood where they were in the agenda, and I thought they were in a committee report, and okay. my fault. Okay. Thank you. So, but we, we still need to approve these at the council level, correct? They'll be on next. They, are, be on next they were, we're just approving the ordinances presented? Next agenda, yes. Yeah. Right, they're, they're held. So, we'll Raphael, are you asking to hold them over then? Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to have to. She, okay, we have the request by Alderman Rivera, Rivera to hold over uh, uh, pending uh, the next city council Second meeting. By, by who? So, okay. Yeah, does, okay, don't need just hold over by Rivera? Okay. 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 Um, uh, next up is Alderman's time. Uh, Mr. Clerk? Uh, Alderman Rivera is first. I'm going to do this briefly. Uh, first of all, uh, as the mayor said earlier in his uh, opening uh, remarks, uh, I too was there uh, visiting Onswood as well. Very impressive. Uh, for those, uh, uh, this company makes uh, special tools, uh, diamond bits, uh, so it's great to have them there. Ho and they're planning to expand. So hopefully uh, there will be some jobs there as well. But it's it's a pretty awesome place. Uh, also, I want to uh, thank the, uh, uh, the Lake County Forest Preserve uh, Committee. They had a wonderful event uh, in, uh, in uh, celebrating Mexican independence. And uh, I want to comment, uh, commend uh, Mario. I want to commend uh, Tony Alba for doing a tremendous job there. There was a lot of people there as well, uh, close to you know 10,000 people that went through there. So it was pretty. It was a pretty nice event. Uh, also, I want to commend the uh, uh, chief, the fire department, uh, who put together this uh, wonderful uh, fundraiser uh, to raise money for uh, our fireman, uh, uh, Kevin Oldham, uh, who is suffering, uh, you know, fighting uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, it was a tremendous effort that all the firemen did to raise, you know, uh, Money. I, from what I understood, it was uh, close to over uh, what uh, forty-five thousand. I just heard uh, from the grapevine. Okay. Fifty-three thousand plus. Fifty-three thousand plus. That is awesome. So uh, I'm asking if uh, you know they can uh, continue, you know, uh, receiving, uh, you know, any uh, kind of, uh, 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 of uh, check or anything because this family definitely needs their help and uh, keep them in their prayers too because you know this is a tough journey for all of them uh, you know the wife and the two kids uh, Kevin and Katie Oldham and their, uh, their daughters uh, uh, Stella and Evelyn so uh, it was a beautiful beautiful event so I congratulate them as well and also uh, I want to thank the uh, fire department also the police department for uh, the block party that was held over at Lancaster uh, you guys did a, a great job, and uh, they really enjoyed themselves. So thank you very much. Alderman Conkin. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say I'd like to report on what happened on August 28th. I met in North Chicago for one of the meetings of the uh, Lake County Military Advisory Council, and I want to just mention that the Naval Center and the uh, Lake County Municipal League, everybody else put on a great presentation, gave us a real good idea of what the impact of the Great Lakes Naval Training Center is to this area. Um, just very simply, in their A schools, they train and push through approximately 16,000 students a year. And each of those students has an annual income through the military of about $19,500, which 
for them is pretty much ex disposable income. Uh, they have their base housing paid for, foods paid for, all they have to worry about is transportation and spending their money. <laughs> Just the way it is. They're 19 years old and they need a place to spend it. Uh, with DOD civilians, military retirees, and other workers at the Navy base, the impact of this area is approximately $2.2 billion. That's just something that I think that we as a council ought to consider to try and get some, uh, get Waukegan more, uh, as we're trying along with this art project and getting all the artists in the town. We want to get the sailors in here also, make uh, Waukegan desirable for Waukegan, uh, for sailors to come into Waukegan, spend their money, and enjoy themselves here. Because they have plenty of disposable income. Thank you. This guy. Oliver and Figueroa. Yeah. Thank you. I um, just want to say that uh, on October 9th, uh, the 46th annual uh, Edwin Montano Memorial Scholarship Fund is being held at the uh, Puerto Rican Society. Um, 46 years of providing scholarships for young people that want to attend college. Uh, this coming Sunday, the American GI Forum is having a spaghetti dinner also for scholarships. That's on September 26th, this Sunday. I have tickets available for that and for both of them. I have tickets available um, uh, also for scholarships for local, for local students attending college. Um, we seem to have this conversation every year. I've talked to the chief about this in, in traffic department. Parking next to East Campus, around East Campus, on Victory Street, St. James, and all the adjoining streets. I think that uh, we, had, we had this conversation, see what we can do. We have this problem every fall. Last year we took care of it. I don't know how we resolve it, but the, the signs are not up, no parking or resident parking only. We need to, uh, if we're gonna do that, we of course have to notify the local residents to be able to resolve this issue. Um, uh, so let's see what we can do uh, hurriedly to, to before winter sets in because we've got a lot of cars being parked uh, both in, in my ward and Alderman uh, Cunningham's ward on the other side of uh, Glen Rock. And um, that's it. Alderman Newsom. Alderman Tempest. Yes. Alderman Needham. Yes. Alderman Larson. Just wanted to uh, commend the library personnel and what the programs that they put on there. And also, uh, Violet and the Main Street members and board members. There's going to be a transition coming up with a number of the board members uh, uh, by, by the uh, requirements of the Main Street uh, guidelines that will have to step down. They will be sorely missed. It includes uh, Jamie O'Meara, uh, Diane Verratti, Mike Hoff, among others. We have a number of energetic, young, aggressive uh, boosters that are going to be coming on the board, and there'll be a, a, a announcement of the new slate here directly, but uh, I just wanted to personally uh, note the pending change and uh, the direction that uh, Main Street is going in and the leadership they offer downtown is uh, very well welcome. Thank you. Here, here. Whatever here, here means. That's it. Yeah. That concludes our alderman's comments. We have a motion to adjourn by Alderman Needham, seconded by Alderman Figueroa. All in favor? Aye. Anybody would like to stay a little bit later? None. Thank you. Aye.